I was going to put out sodium chloride, but then that would have been assault and battery. <laughs> That's right. Today we're talking about oxidation and reduction. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu Keminacha. I'm your host Shu, and with me as always is Fu. What up, nerds? So Fu, starting a new unit has got me really charged up. Yeah, I am actually not shocked that you are charged up. You know, I'm really amped about what we're working on currently. Yeah, the feeling in the air is electric. So let's get started. Oxidation and reduction, a lesson from the redox unit. Electrochemistry intro. Electrochemistry involves the transfer of electrons. This results in the changing of oxidation numbers as the reaction proceeds. Remember, oxidation numbers can be found in the upper right for each element on the periodic table. It involves the complementary processes of oxidation and reduction and this is abbreviated together as redox. Oxidation is the loss of electrons. Reduction is the gain of electrons. Now, if you look at the picture over here, we have a nice little mnemonic device to help you remember. Oil rig. Oxidation is losing electrons, and reduction is gaining electrons. Oil rig. If you take a look at the diagram up here, we have an electron donor and an electron acceptor on the left side of this arrow. The electron donor is giving away that electron or losing the electron, losing that is oxidation. The electron acceptor is gaining the electron, so gaining that is reduction. During oxidation, the oxidation number of an element must increase due to the loss of electrons. Now remember, electrons have a negative charge, so if you lose electrons, your charge or oxidation state has to go up, has to become more positive. During reduction, the oxidation number of an element must decrease due to the gain of electrons. Thus, the name reduction. Now again, electrons being negative, if you gain electrons or gain negative, your oxidation number would go down. Notice that these two processes go together. Taking a look at the chemical equation, this is a nice reminder that oxidation and reduction always go together. Cu on the left has an oxidation state of zero, whereas on the right, the product side, it has an oxidation state of plus two. Because it went from zero to plus two, it must have lost negative or lost electrons, so therefore this is oxidation. Ag is plus one on the left and zero on the right. So since it went from plus one to zero for its oxidation state, we see that it's going down. It must have gained negative or gained electrons and this is reduction. Assigning oxidation numbers. Rule number one, the oxidation number of an element equals zero. So in our example, we have O2. O2 is a diatomic element. Even with the two, it's still an element. So automatically, its oxidation number is zero. Rule number two, the oxidation number of an ion equals the charge of that ion. So for example, if oxygen has a two minus charge, its oxidation number is minus two. Rule number three, the sum of the oxidation numbers in a compound equals zero. Use your periodic table to look up individual elements, oxidation numbers. So if you recall, those oxidation numbers are found in the upper right for each element on the periodic table. And there may be more than one listed. And one of the things that's special about this unit is we're not gonna look up the charges to polyatomic ions on table E. Instead, we're gonna look up the oxidation numbers for each individual element within that polyatomic. If more than one is listed, move on to other elements and come back later. Let's look at an example, H2SO3. So we know from formula writing and also acids and bases that hydrogen is plus one, and we're sure of that here. Sulfur, on the other hand, can be negative two, plus four, or plus six. So we're not sure about what its oxidation number is gonna be. So we're gonna skip it and we're gonna come back. When we look at our periodic table, we see that oxygen is always negative two. And so what we're gonna be able to do is mathematically figure out what the oxidation number is for sulfur. So getting my total positive charge, I have plus two 
for my total negative charge, negative two times three, I have negative six. Because it's a compound, I want everything to add up to zero, which means mathematically that I need a plus four in for sulfur. Plus two plus four is six, minus six is zero. So I put the plus four up here. Now just to be clear, the oxidation numbers are the numbers that we see up top, not our total charges that we are keeping track of at the bottom. So for my final answer, I say that hydrogen's oxidation number is plus one, sulfur is plus four, and oxygen is negative two. Rule number four, the sum of the oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion have to add up to the total charge of that polyatomic ion. Now, for example, phosphate has a negative three charge, so PO4 has to add up to negative three. Now, phosphorus has multiple oxidation states of negative three, plus three, and plus five on your periodic table. Oxygen, we know. So we're gonna skip over phosphorus for now, and we're gonna write the negative two for oxygen. There are four of them, that is a total of negative eight, and I need this to add up to the charge of the polyatomic ion, not zero. So this is gonna add up to negative three. So what minus eight equals negative three? That would be a plus five. So phosphorus must have a plus five in this case. So my final answers are P with a plus five and O with a minus two. Rule number five, oxygen has an oxidation number of negative two. We've seen this already, but there are two exceptions to this rule. The first one being peroxide. Peroxide is O2 negative two. It's a polyatomic ion. So we have to have everything add up to negative two, but there's two oxygen. So what times two gives me negative two? Well, negative one, of course. So the oxidation number of oxygen in peroxide is negative one. The other exception is when oxygen is bonded to fluorine. Now fluorine's more electronegative. It's gonna get its negative one charge here. So what's oxygen gonna be? They can't both be negative. You do need to get everything to add up to zero. So negative one times two is negative two. So oxygen in this case actually has to be plus two. So O is plus two, F is minus one. Rule number six, hydrogen has an oxidation number of plus one. We've seen this. There is an exception, however, and this is for metal hydrides. If you look at our example, you'll know you'll have a metal hydride because you'll have a metal in front of hydrogen. Now, finding the oxidation number of hydrogen here is still very easy, but it's not plus one. Lithium is in group one, it's an alkali metal. It always has an oxidation number of plus one. That means that hydrogen has to be a negative one because plus one minus one equals zero. All right, so lithium is plus one and hydrogen is minus one. Identifying oxidation and reduction. In a redox reaction, you will see the oxidation numbers of two elements change from left to right. One element is oxidized and one element is reduced. Okay, we're gonna do an example. Are you ready, Fu? I am. Determine the oxidation number of each element listed. Then determine which element is oxidized and which is reduced. All right, let's start with our oxidation numbers on the left. Okay, so I see iron, it says two Fe. Do I have to worry about this two in front? You don't have to worry about the two, just the element itself. Okay, so it's just an element. Elements are just zero, so oxidation state of zero. Good. Um, then I see Cl2, it's diatomic, but it's still an element, right? So still an element. Zero. Good, let's take a look at the oxidation numbers on the right in the compound now. Right, yeah, it's a compound, so it's gotta add up to zero. Good. And yeah, Fe, it's got two oxidation states on that periodic table. Yeah, it table. could be plus two or plus three. So let's skip it and move on to the next element. Okay, so chlorine, well, it's negative in this case, and the only negative one for chlorine is negative one. Good, now we have three of them, so what does that tell us? Okay, so that's a total of negative three. It's gotta add up to zero. I've only got one iron, so that iron has to be positive three. Very good. So we've got all of our oxidation numbers all set. Let's look at how oxidation numbers are changing. So give me an element that has its oxidation number changing from left to right. All right, well I see iron goes from zero to positive three. All right, so we have to figure out if that's oxidation or reduction. There's a really good way to remember it. What is oh, that? Okay, I remember oil rig. Oil rig. I L and R I G. Now what does that stand for again? Oxidation is losing electrons and reduction is gaining electrons. Very good. So now Effie's going from zero to plus three. 
Are we losing or gaining electrons? Well, you gotta remember electrons are negative, right? And to go from zero to plus three, I'm becoming more positive. Good. Which means I must be losing those negatives, right? Very good. And losing is oxidation. Oxidation is losing. So that is oxidation. Very good. All right. What else has its oxidation number changing? Um, looks like chlorine is going from zero to negative one. All right, so let's use oil rig again. Well, reduction is gaining electrons, and to go from zero to negative one, um, I must be gaining electrons, gaining negative. This also kind of makes sense too, right? Reduction, my number's going down, it's being reduced. So from Very zero good. to negative one is reduction. Good, and notice how oxidation and reduction always go together. Okay. All right, we have another example. Shu, are you ready? I'm ready. Good. Determine the oxidation number of each element listed, then determine which element is oxidized and which is reduced. All right, we have our chemical equation. Let's determine our oxidation numbers. All right, so Ca is an element, so zero for its oxidation number. Um, H and Cl are both in a compound, so we're gonna have to make sure everything adds up to zero. Hydrogen's in the front of the formula, so I'm going with plus one. CL in group 17, it's gotta be the negative one. Only negative one is negative one, right? Okay, um, over on the product side, calcium's in group two, so plus two. CL again is minus one. And H2 diatomic, but element, so zero. Okay, so now that we have our oxidation states, let's look at an element on the left whose oxidation number is different on the right. All right, so CA is going from zero to plus two. Okay, so what does that mean? Was it oxidized or was it reduced? Okay, so the oxidation number is going up. It must be losing negative oil rig, so oxidation. Very good. And what is our other element? Because these always happen together. That's changing an oxidation state from left to right. All right, so I have plus one going to zero. Uh, so it's going down, right? Less positive. So it must be gaining negative to go from plus one to zero. Okay. And oil rig gaining electrons is reduction. Very good. Now I noticed that the Cl stayed the same, right? So we don't do anything with that? Good, sometimes you'll have other ions that don't end up changing their oxidation states, but you will always have one going up and one going down for oxidation and reduction um, when you do have a redox reaction. Sounds good. You try number one. Determine the oxidation number of each element listed. Then determine which element is oxidized and which is reduced. Redox reactions include synthesis, decomposition, and single replacement. These all involve single elements on one side and compounds on the other, meaning that the oxidation numbers must change. So guys, inevitably you're gonna see a question on the Regents exam that has four choices and it says which of the following is a redox reaction. Now, I don't want you to spend a whole lot of time and assign oxidation numbers to everything just to see if something changed. There's a much easier and quicker way to do this. When you have an element that's by itself on one side of the chemical equation, its oxidation state has to be zero. Now, if that same element is in a compound on the other side of the equation, it has to be a number other than zero for its oxidation state. So you know it changed. So whenever you see this question, if you have an element by itself on one side of the equation and in a compound on the other side, you know the oxidation number changed and you know you have redox. Double replacement reactions are not redox reactions, since the oxidation numbers don't change. If you take a look at our example down below, we have a double replacement reaction. Now, the oxidation numbers are not changing. The ions are just switching places. So therefore, this is not a redox reaction. You try number two. List each of the following reactions as either redox or not redox, then justify your answer. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode on oxidation and reduction. Later, nerds. I was going to put out salt. Nope. I was going to put out. I was going to put out sodium. So food, starting a new unit has got me real. No, no. Okay, let's just keep going. So food, starting a new unit has got me really charged up. I'm not shocked. I didn't like the way I looked at that and said I'm not shocked. <laughs> AG goes from HG, oh, whoa. Oh, so close. So close. AG, HG, HG, HGTV, whatever. <laughs>
Mercury Television, as I like to call it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not Home and Garden Television. No. No. No, 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 no. 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 Oh, no, 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 Me, Mr. Superman, he, he no, he's here. No, no. No. No, 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 no. No. We've already seen this already. There are two exceptions for he oxygen. said we've already seen this already. <laughs> Reduction, I don't know, R-I-R. <laughs> Reduction is raining. Then determine which element ah uh, is, ah uh, is, is all right are you ready you already you asked already me that all right ladies and gentlemen we have another example for you sure are you ready i'm ready <laughs> stop staring at me i think that was good well that's going to do it for today's episode on re oxidation and reduction yeah today's episode is brought to you by Dad's the band! Featuring Walter on the bass, he learned to play in the sixth grade. The rhythmic, soothing cadence of auctioneer Gary. The soulful sounds of Pastor Frank. And the edu R&B superstars Shoop Doggy Dog and Dr. Fu. Music by dads, for dads. But we never off, always zone to the break of dawn. S-E-I-E-N-C-E -E -E in the hall, they call S-Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys to men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and uh. It's like that, and like this, and like that, and uh. It's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in chill to the next episode.